Welcome back to Inorganic Chemistry. We're going to continue our discussion of atomic structure in Chapter 2. Last time we saw the Bohr model uh, and uh, we had a primer on quantum mechanics and we learned about the particle in a box and uh, how the quantum behavior of a confined particle. <clears throat> then we saw how that can give rise to the shape of the orbitals in an atom. This time we're going to talk about penetration and shielding. <clears throat> so, so far we've been talking about hydrogen or hydrogen-like atoms. And um, that's because in the Bohr model you have the proton at the nucleus and the electron uh, orbiting around it. With quantum mechanics we're able to use Schrodinger equation to solve uh, the wave function of the electron. But now uh, we want to, as chemists, look at more things than just hydrogen. So what do we do when there's more than one electron? In order to, uh, well, there's a problem, which is the classic three-body problem. There are too many particles, once we get to helium, uh, to keep track of, and we can't solve the Schrodinger equation uh, exactly. So we need to f make approximations. To help us with the approximations, we're going to talk about penetration and shielding. The idea is that uh, if we focus on one electron, say the hydrogen 2s electron, then any, any uh, electron in the 2p orbital would have some effect uh, of that 2s orbital, uh, and um, that effect would be that it would shield, or its negative charge would par partially screen positive charge of the nucleus, depending on penetration. So, looking at this uh, radial probability density function that we learned about last time, which orbital is closer to the nucleus? The 2s or the 2p? And I'll give you a few uh, seconds to think about that. Well, uh, you might have said 2s or 2p, and there's some reasons for both of those. Look here at the light green curve, which is the hydrogen 2s. We see that the maximum of the curve is further away, this is the radius from the, from the nucleus, further away than the maximum of the 2p orbital. However, if we continue to follow this 2s curve, we see that there is a lobe of the curve of the orbital that is closer to the nucleus, higher density here, closer to the nucleus than the 2p. And so we would call this the penetration. Uh, so the 2s orbital actually penetrates closer to the nucleus than the 2p. <clears throat> what does this mean? Well, using this concept of penetration, we, we can uh, think about how each electron in an atom is shielded from the nucleus. And the shielding constant comes in that the effective nuclear charge that an electron feels is going to be the actual nuclear charge minus this shielding constant. And Slater came up with a set of rules that we can approximate what the shielding effect would be. We're going to do the rules in order, and I'll show you an example. So, um, we learned in general chemistry about the order of the orbitals, and we'll talk more next time about exactly why we have these in this order. But uh, we're going to group the S and P's together. So the 2S and 2P's are going to be grouped together, 3S and 3P, but then the 3D will be grouped separately, and so on. And uh, if we're interested in a particular electron, say this electron here in the, in the middle of this series, uh, electrons in groups that are higher, we're going to ignore their shielding effect. If we're considering an S or P orbital or electron, electrons in the same group will shield 0.35. So again, if we're looking here, if there's any P electrons, they partially shield that s electron by 0.35, unless we're looking at 1s. Uh, 
n minus 1 group would shield 0.85. So again, if we're looking here, this, this is, uh, that's 4, so that's 3, n minus 1. Those group, those electrons would shield 0.85, and then anything lower than that shields 1. However, if the electron we're considering its energy level is a D or F, they actually get shielded more. So uh, how does that work out? Well, if it's in the same, if you have like five uh, electrons in the 4F, and we're just considering one of those electrons, then the other four shield by 0.35. And everything else below here is going to shield by one because D and F orbitals don't penetrate as well as S and P orbitals do. <clears throat> well, let's look at an example. It's uh, the best way to <clears throat> understand these Slater's rules is to just do one of these problems. And so, um, what? let's consider the energy of a 4S electron in potassium. So potassium is element number 19. Um, and so there are 19 electrons, and we learned from general chemistry to create electron configuration like this, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S1. <clears throat> and the first step in Slater's rules is to group the S and P's by N. Okay. Okay, so there's my, there are my groupings. And I'm interested in the energy of this electron out here. So uh, these electrons are the n minus 1. So n minus 1, uh, there are 2 and 6 or 8 electrons, and uh, each of them is going to shield 0 0.85. <clears throat> n minus 2, n minus 3, um, n minus 2, and so on, there are 8 plus 2, 10 electrons. Uh, and each of those shield completely. So my total shielding, and there's, well, the first one was other electrons in the same group. There are no other electrons. There's only one electron there. So a total shielding constant then of 16.8 uh, S. Uh, so that means our Z effective, or sometimes Z star, is, um, again, the nuclear charge minus the shielding. In this case, the nuclear charge is 19. The shielding is 16.8. So the effective nuclear charge is that this uh, S electron out here feels is 2.2. And then what is the energy? Well, we can go back to the Bohr equation. And um, we know that there's some constant, the Rydberg constant, times the nucleus charge squared, but in this case it's the effective nuclear charge uh, divided by the principal quantum number squared. So we plug in our values, uh, negative 13.6 electron volts, and we have 2.2 uh, is our nu effective nuclear charge, n is 4, so 4 squared, and we get negative 4.1 electron volts. And this actually compares quite favorably to the ionization energy, first ionization energy of potassium. So this approximation, Slater's rules, uh, works fairly well. Um, you might be asking why did we jump to the 4s instead of the 3d, and it's because of this. Uh, shielding and penetration in a multi-electron atom. So here we see potassium. We figured out the energy of 4s electron. If you had done the same calculation and, and put an electron in 3d instead, you would find that it is going to be higher energy. It'll be more shielded. And so overall it has higher energy and so we put the electron in 4s first. Now one thing, uh, these are actual um, not using Slater's rules. These are more uh, precise calculations. For, we now have computers and can do uh, more sophisticated models such, such as self-consistent field theory. And so we see that the S and P uh, orbitals are actually different energies, whereas in hydrogen they're, they're all the same. Um, so because now S, P, D, F are different 
energy levels, we get different electron configurations when we have multi-electron atoms. So we'll talk about electron configurations next time. So thank you for your attention.